Hi, this is Gerald Gray from Guiding Principal Consulting, and today we're going to be looking at how to create a sequence diagram using Spark Systems Enterprise Architect. In today's blank project, you see I have a single package called Example, and we're going to add a sequence diagram to it. You simply click on the new diagram icon, and then we can say Sequence, and select the sequence diagram from the diagram type. Select OK, and now we have a blank workspace in which to create our diagram. We're going to follow along in the sequence diagram that is represented in the Enterprise Architect help. The Enterprise Architect picture is helpful, but for new for people that are new to Enterprise Architect, sometimes it can be hard to figure out how to create these representations. So we're going to walk right through that diagram. So start off, we're going to grab an actor, and we're going to click and drag and drop him onto our workspace. And we just type in the description of the name here. Select OK, and now we have our first widget on our screen. The next thing we're going to do is select the boundary drawing object, and we're going to drag and drop it onto the, the screen. Now, this boundary object would normally represent some sort of human-machine interface. In this case, in the help file, this was called the order screen. Now, we're going to draw the arrow from our customer actor to our order screen. In Enterprise Architect, the convention is all these widgets, when you select it, you'll see an arrow appear on the border. So all you do is click on the arrow, your cursor will turn into an arrow, and you drag and drop it over onto the target system. Now we're going to add the lifeline, and we're going to drag and drop that on the screen. And this was our shopping cart from the help. Select OK and now we have our shopping cart. In the same fashion, we'll draw an arrow from our order screen to our shopping cart. And this arrow, you can double click an arrow to bring up its message properties. And in this case, it was called Get Cart. Now we're going to have another lifeline and we're going to drag and drop that on the screen. And this is going to be the cart item. We say OK. But then you're saying, hey, this cart item is not lower down on the screen vertically from our shopping cart like it shows in the picture. And we'll show you how we do that. We're going to go from our shopping cart. And we're going to drag and drop onto our cart item. So we're going to go from here. And we're going to drag and drop onto our cart item. Now we can double click on that arrow and we can say under lifecycle new and in the help they actually gave it a message name of new and you click OK. Now you see that our cart item has dropped down on the landscape here and we have that dashed arrow. So now we're going to draw a few more interactions. We're going to drag and drop this here. And this message name was called Create Item. Now in the help file, there was a little gap here showing the message uh, exchange. And to do that, we're going to right click on the, the Create Item message. And we're going to look at Activations. And we're going to select new message group. Now you see that you have that gap there in the lifeline. Next, to show the self uh, activity of add item, we're going to click and drag the arrow and drag it back onto the same lifeline. You can double click that and you you can double click the arrow and then we can give it a name. Add item. Now to conclude our cart item, we're just going to add one more arrow. There we go. 
Next on the drawing, we're going to have an entity that will represent the order. So we see the entity over here in the left. We drag and drop that out. And you can see it already has a stereotype of entity. This is, rep is going to represent our order. And then we have a couple more arrows to create. We're going to go from the order screen to our order. Drag and drop. And we gave that a name of get parent. We'll move this down just a little bit. And then we're going to show a return arrow. Drag and drop that back. And to make it look like the dashed line that represents a return from the order to the order screen, we double click that. We gave it the name cost and we say is return. So we click that checkbox, say OK, and there you have the cost. We're going to add one more entity and that is the payment. with a couple more arrows. We're going to go from the order screen to payment. And this arrow was called delete payment. We have a self activity here. Double click on that to Give it the name of check. We're going to return from this entity back to the order screen. This was called confirm payment. And it was also return. And then we have one last arrow as we go from the order screen back to the customer. This is also a return. Now the only thing we might do is we might give it a note. And we might do some cleaning up. We might want to copy this picture and put it into something else for documentation if we're not using the internal documentations from Spark Enterprise Architect. So we'll just do some clicking and dragging to get our elements to lay out a little bit better on our screen. You'll notice not only can we move them horizontally, we can move them vertically just to tighten up the drawing just a little bit. To get all of the lifelines to uh, move up a little bit, you only have to select one, click and drag, and they will all be moved vertically. Now you can see that we've got all the elements from our sequence diagram, and you can see they all fit nicely into one page. And there you have it, your very first sequence diagram.